Hi everybody, it's Steve Smith, aka R Dallas from Nimble Pros Software. And today I want to talk to you about interfaces and implementations. So I want you to remember interfaces describe what and implementations describe how. We'll get into why or anything else in this video. But those are the two things I want you to remember. So on my screen right now, I have an example of an interface. This is a super common interface. In fact, you even get this out of the box in a lot of the .NET templates because they need to be able to send emails for things like forgot password and stuff. So if you say, I want to include the .NET Core identity stuff in your ASP.NET Core project, it's going to give you one of these types of interfaces. And some people would argue that this interface is a little too specific because it's talking about email as a specific thing, as opposed to something generic like notifications. But um, it's fine in this case, because even with email, there are a bunch of different ways how you could choose to send email from your application. So we're going to stick with this as our example because it's so ubiquitous and every application needs to send emails. All right. So here's an example of a client of this code. So we've got this, imagine a shopping cart and it wants to send some email that says, Hey, thank you for your order. So after you check out, we're going to save the state of the cart, create a new order, whatever's involved there. And then we're going to call, this email send email async uh, method and that's going to send some message which i haven't included here that would say hey thank you for your order why am i showing you this because i want to make it clear that the benefit of having that interface is that the calling code doesn't care about the details what i didn't have to do in this line of code is a whole bunch of code that talks about you know smtp servers and port 25 and how do i authenticate to the server and what do i do when i need to retry and and how do i you know format the email and all that stuff none of that is in here because the shopping cart you know service where you decide that you're going to create a new order and then and then send the user some confirmation email doesn't care about any of that, right? It's a different level of abstraction that is not the same level of abstraction as the business process that's happening at this level. So what if I do actually want to implement this somehow? Well, maybe as the developer, I don't really care how emails get sent, but I do want to make sure that that gets called under the right circumstances. So what I might do is implement it myself and I could do something really simple, like just send something to the console every time this email gets sent. And that would allow me to just visually verify that, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's working and, and it does send it when it's supposed to, right? And so, you know, somewhere in here, I could create a new implementation uh, of the cart or cart equals new cart. And now here I have to pass in an implementation of I send email. So right here, I can just do up a, a fake email sender right there. And then we can say cart dot, um, what are we doing? Check out async like this, and it doesn't actually need anything. We'll just await on that. Uh, and then we'll do a console.readline, finish that up. And now when I run the application, you can see that it says, hello world, email sent. So I know the email would have been sent if I'd passed in a real implementation. Now, what are some of the details that this real implementation might need to include, right? Well, when I wanna add another way of doing this, perhaps the one that we'll use in production, right? I could just create another implementation. And so this means I don't have to edit code. I don't have to risk breaking any code that's depending on existing implementations. I just create a new implementation. Always try when you can to enhance the functionality of your system by creating new behavior in new classes, which means that you're not going to break anything that's depending on those old classes. So what would I call one here that's just going to use SMTP? Well, we'll call it an SMTP email sender. Uh, and then in here, Right. Instead of doing console, I would go and use uh, system net mail or uh, ideally something like MimeKit, which is the preferred way to do that now. And we would implement this uh, with SMTP. Right. But maybe I want to use something else. Maybe I want to use, uh, you know, let's say SendGrid because that's a popular uh, email implementation. Well, I could put in SendGrid here and this SendGrid email sender could implement this with SendGrid. Right. And maybe this one needs to have, you know, the SendGrid settings, right. Or something get passed in. So, you know, I can pass in different dependencies to each implementation, however it needs them. Right. And whether this is for sending an email or file access or doing any kind of persistence or a host of other things that touch real implementation code inside your systems. If you have 
an interface and you have the interface just describe what needs to happen from the perspective of the client, from the perspective of the thing that's calling the interface, right? You're gonna have a much better time. And then you can put all the low level details of how it's gonna perform that task inside of the respective implementation and then create as many different implementations as your application may need, not just in production, but also in your test environment, your local dev environment, et cetera. All right, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I also have a blog post that you can read or refer other people to if you think that'd be helpful for other developers and keep improving. Thanks.